Welcome back to Snowrunner, guys, and if you're a fan of truck tweaks, then you will no doubt be familiar with the name MaxMike181. Now, he recently did a updated version, or a sort of enhanced, as he calls it, version of the CAT 745C. Now, all the focus lately has been on the new CAT, the 770G, that is coming in Phase 2 and the Yukon region. However, I figured it would actually be really cool to not only revisit the 745C, but also to take a look, a more in-depth look, Look at his enhanced version so let's go ahead and pick it up and I've actually like spent you know my campaign money on it so it better be good but this thing obviously it's ginormous it's huge and there are quite a few different engine options there's the a16v2000 which has this as, a, as has this at a b plus sorry for some reason that was ridiculously difficult to actually say but it has this as a at a b plus power to weight rating the next engine up is going to get you an A-, minus. the next engine is going to get you an A, and the final engine is going to get you an S. Now, that is the Westline B16 M2680, which even though it's... I'm not quite sure how, like, campaign-friendly that engine is, but it is there if you want to use it. I will personally be using the V16 M2450. Now, let's go ahead and buy that engine, and then we have two different gearbox options on top of the standard gearbox that it comes with. We have the Advanced Special. We also have the Crawler Box Special HD, which we're definitely going to go with that. And we're going to try to recoup some money by selling the selling the stuff that we don't have and then suspension wise we have stock active and then raised now i am personally going to go for the active setup because i think that's a really cool option to even have on this thing and then i'm going to sell that to, to yet again try to recoup some money now the other thing that he's done that's really really interesting is he has opened up the tire selection so that's that's huge with these things right i mean one of the biggest complaints that everybody has with these cats is the fact that tire options have always been very very limited now of course you have the ever capable uod2 this time in 71 inch which is tremendous i just wish they were offset a little bit further um to the edge of the fender but that's neither here nor there because you also have the mud tires which do actually go all the way out and i'm actually personally thinking now i know that they aren't necessarily the best in their class but the uh the msh ones actually are really cool looking on this thing but the other nice thing is that you have the monster mud tires by quasi and those are becoming very very popular on tweaked trucks and for good reason they're very good tires and they're also a very good looking model so we'll do we will we'll, we'll go through them and let you guys see how they look but we also like i said we have the monster mud tires in 71 with the monster mud tires with studs in 71 and then we have the standard mud tires and then we have the standard mud tires with studs and then we have 71 inch tega tires now the standard mud tires actually look really really good but i think for my purposes here we're actually going to go with the 71 inch monster mud tires which they're the same height they're just a lot wider they're basically steamroller spec so we're going to go ahead and actually buy those sell those because again recoup some of that money and we've got a autonomous winch hd stock heavy extended heavy advanced heavy and twin motor heavy now to sort of keep kind of in line with the standard game balance we're gonna go with the advanced heavy and just sell a bunch of my stock heavies and reclaim almost seventeen thousand dollars in game and then we'll go to the spare that is ugly as heck but it's effective and I, I, I don't like it. Um, let's see. What do we have as far as snorkel options? I kind of like this, the tall mushroom. It's kind of a weird position, but I am, I think, you know what? Because it'd be nice and out of the way. I think I'm going to go with the flat cap. And, no, actually the wedge cap. It's super discreet and I like that a lot. Now, obviously, one of the biggest things about this tweak is that it adds a lot of cargo carrying options. Like, for example, the cargo bed, heavy crane options, um, both the, ooh, ooh, you got the big old fuel carrier, the log carrier, the water tank, lots of stuff going on here, actually, lots of stuff. Flatbed, van body, maintenance frame, which you could technically turn this thing into one of the most capable maintenance rigs in the game. You also have the seismic vibrator module, you have the sideboard bed, you have the fuel tank, and the small loading crane that can reside out at the back if you wanted to use a sideboard bed or a flatbed. Now, I think what I'm probably going to do is test this thing out as a 
maintenance rig because I do feel like in terms of maintenance rigs this would be a very cool one to have also auxiliary lighting has been added and I'm thinking that the double LED bars would actually be a really nice little fit as well as the small roof rack to add to that maintainer capability and you also have a variety of bumper options, this one being off of the twin steer. And apart from the odd um, break in the bottom, I think it looks really cool on this chassis. But due to that odd break on the bottom, I'm kind of, kind of iffy on it. Now, I do like this, and it actually does seem to attach pretty realistically. And so that's what we're going to go with, the heavy-duty pipe bumper. And you do only have, due to the tires that we've chosen, we only have one wheel choice. But that's not really that big of a deal. And then we also have, it's worth noting that we do only have one color. This cat can only be used in Caterpillar Yellow for obvious reasons. Now, to the bobbleheads, we can actually go ahead and put beans on the interior, which we will do. And I'm going to sell some of those, recoup some of that money. Pine Forest. And let's see. I'm not going to do any of the interior stickers because I can't really see. And we will do Off-Road Warden on the hood. So now we're actually going to go ahead and retain this. Go to uh, Global Map, Flooded Foothills, and we're going to travel to the Flooded Foothills Garage. Because I feel like it would be a better test uh, to bring this thing to flooded foothills and do some actual river fording as well as mountain climbing to really see if we can highlight some of the areas where this thing does well, maybe doesn't do all that well, and also test out the game balance and see if it's sort of overdone, overpowered, or, you know, maybe decently well balanced and, you know, a worthwhile tweak to add to your game. So let's actually verify what time it is and skip back. And let's see, we got beans right there on the dash, my dude. And let's fire this thing up. Take her for a run. Oh, man, with all that auxiliary lighting on, you'll be good to go when the sun goes down, that's for sure. He's also added a full all-wheel drive system, which is amazing to have. And let's also see what happens when we change this suspension mode. It's a good amount of lift, actually. That's a, that's a really hefty amount of lift. I applaud uh, uh i applaud that and heavily approve of it now obviously this does not fall into the standard you know the standard vehicle balance entirely but what we're setting off to do today is we're setting off to see if it basically goes so far outside the realm of let me turn off the beacons real quick so basically if it's going to go so far outside the realm of the normal game that it would just be overpowered or if it you know kind of fits into that game balance well while also being able to sort of flex its muscle a little bit so let's find out low plus is a good speed for it actually maintains some good momentum while being slow enough that it's not over the top or crazy let's put it into high remember this is crawler box hd and go for the river fording That's actually a really good sign. So keep in mind, we don't have the top engine in it. And I really wanted to see if it would if it would cross the river with the Crawler Box HD, if it would cross the river in high, or if it would just kind of sputter out and stall. The fact that it sputters out and stalls actually, actually kind of makes me aware that this thing is basically fully capable of fitting into the game's normal balance without being overpowered as long as you don't use the maximum engine and i can see this actually being a very good contender for console mods because it's a well put together truck tweak while also not being over the top and having the ability to fit into that standard game balance uh without being too wild now let's see how it does in just standard automatic mode with the almost top engine but not quite little bump of the clutch there because I could tell it was slowing down I could tell it wanted a lower gear but I also didn't want it to reset all the way back to first and obviously it's very very capable and I think that it's more capable obviously than its standard counterpart however I don't think it's outside of the realm of what the developers would deem fair to the balance of the game now the question is will people that really you know feel iffy about 
truck tweaks be okay with something like this? Because there are a lot of people that are like, well, you'll never see a truck tweak in my game because it messes with the standard balance and therefore it's op it's it's completely OP and you know, you're not playing the game fairly by using it. Now, the way I see that though is if you don't like to use tweaked trucks, you do not have to use them at all. However, it, however, if someone else chooses to use a tweaked truck, I mean, it is their it is their game world and it doesn't affect your game world and so I feel like it's really down to that personal preference at that point. You know, that personal preference is what matters at the end of the day and what helps you enjoy the game more. I mean, really it's all about having fun. I mean, we play these games because we like the challenge, but we also enjoy the fun factor of it. I mean, if there was no fun factor, nobody would play the game. And I think at the end of the day, you know, if you can find a happy medium for yourself that works for you, a happy medium between fairness in the game balance as well as fun factor, then you've got a winner there. And I definitely think that this thing with this particular engine fits really well into that into that sort of uh, sort of makeup, as it were. Now, this is really impressive, though, because this section, as you guys know, especially if you were on one of my recent streams where we tried to take a Freightliner uh, M916A1 through here with a trailer, that thing needed help. It needed a ton of help, and this thing is strolling it in low plus. It's actually doing a very, very, very respectable job. A very, very, very respectable job. And at the end of the day, I think that... Is that my trailer? Oh my god, that's my trailer. I left that trailer there because I was fed up with it. Like, I, le I legitimately left that trailer there because I was fed up with it. And I didn't even remember it was there. And I was thinking about the Freightliner earlier because I was talking about it. And I was like, wait... Is that the trailer that I left here with the Freightliner on that stream? And I'm like, yes, yes it is. But as you can see, this thing just absolutely monstered through that mud. And it didn't really have any difficulties. I mean, yeah, you're going to be going slow, but that's kind of the name of the game when you're driving a, a vehicle this big. Now, if you guys have any thoughts or opinions on either this vehicle or the video itself, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And if you would like to see more videos like this one in your inbox, make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you all later.